1970s, D35, 309, so that makes you what, a 71, 72, something like that, it's a 309, it's early 70s, D35. Uh, this is from a repeat customer, Yeah, hey, I felt bad about this guitar because I, I was too busy to work on it the first time, so I recommended someone else, well that someone else didn't do um, a great job on it, and so anyways, it came back to me. Um, this time I said, yeah, I'll take it, you know, took it in, um, anyway, it had a neck reset done on it, the neck reset wasn't enough, had a high action, low saddle, the bridge had been replaced for some reason or another, but it wasn't put in the right place, and that's the first thing I noticed, you know, every 70s I get in, I check the bridge location, uh, the bridge was eighth of an inch off, a little more than eighth of an inch, uh, you can see, I fly scooted it on this one. So I scooted it, I put a, did I put a maple in it? Yeah, I put a maple bridge plate in it. Maple. I put a maple bridge plate in it to make it a little bit brighter. And then I also enlarged the sound hole, which is something I like to do on D35s because D35s are naturally bassy guitars. And when you open the sound hole up, it gives it more treble, more mid-range, um, along with the bridge plate here. He gave it quite a bit more snap. We also took the popsicle brace out. So again, that's more high, uh, high end and got rid of the big heavy Grover tuners. So now we've got this pretty lightweight rose nut, rosewood dreadnought with uh, light binding. And personally, I mean, I like white binding. Not only does it give it the, you know, a little bit of the Tony Rice look, but I, I like the, um, I like the way the white binding goes with the white binding on the body. To me, it just looks, it looks a little more elegant. Uh, and I can see the dots really nice. And so, I like, I like white binding. And I like D35s that 
have a nice neck. This one has a really good neck on it. Super, super comfortable to play. Uh, I did an equi shot, you know, and it just took like another 15 thousandths off the heel. It was not that big of a deal, but it made the difference between, there's my saddle. You see, it came in with almost no saddle. And I've got a super low action on it right now. The action is about 85 thousandths of an inch. Might even be about 80 thousandths of an inch right now. It is a low action. And I just, you know, I actually, this is the, the, the original saddle, and I shimmed the bottom of it just to give me a test saddle. And there's nothing wrong with shimming the saddle in some instances. First of all, the shim that I use is a high-quality uh, rosewood. It's left over from when I cut bridge banks. So it's either Brazilian rosewood, Honduran rosewood, or Madagascar rosewood. It's very, very high-quality rosewood. And I super glue it to the saddle bottom and then shape it to where I want it. What I've noticed is that, number one, it gives it a little bit of that tone. It gives it a little bit of that, uh, that different wood tone. Number two is great if you ever have an undersaddled pickup and then you have a wood wood shim on top of you have a wood shim your undersaddled pickup and then that's sitting on a wooden bridge and you have a wood sandwich on your undersaddled pickup and it will reduce so much of the quackiness of an undersaddled uh, pickup now this one doesn't have a pickup but my point is is i use shims for certain things and in this case the saddle shot's very deep so there's no danger of the saddle, you know, tilting forward or anything. It gives it a little bit of an easy adjustability. So if I made it too tall, then the owner could easily sh sand down that wood. I also think that, you know, just because you're, the bottom of your saddle is square, nobody said the bottom of the saddle slot is square. And even if you cut it square, how do you... Mm, how do you confirm that your square saddle slot is sitting on square on that thing? You see, you know, it can be off a little bit. It's still square. This is square, but they're not square to each other. So, you know, you got a lot of assumptions here. Anyway, the point is, when you have a wood, it seems to me that sometimes, I don't know, it seems to me that maybe the wood on the sham will mold a little bit to the bottom of the saddle slot. All I can tell you is this. I've never, ever seen a decline, a detrimental tone due to using a wooden shim on the bottom of a saddle if it is glued on and nice and solid. Anyway, I did this once. I didn't tell the customer and he, you know, he got, uh, he got on me because I should have explained to him what I was doing there. So this one has a shim in it and I'm not saying it's going to be permanent, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to throw this saddle away. I might make another saddle for the customer that's a little taller and send that along too and then he can have this one also. Point of all this, the action on this guitar is low. And man, is it comfortable to play. It is just absolutely effortless. Um, you know, you can't thrash on it, you can't bang on it, but you can play pretty hard on it, surprisingly. And I'm not getting any buzzes on it, you know, as long as the neck is straight. And you don't have a lot of relief, which will cause a buzz up here. You can get away with a pretty low action. And so forth, okay? Really plays nice, man, for swing chords. Okay, and then I also enlarge the sound hole, and that, uh, I, you know, I like to do that on D35s. It, it opens them up, gives them a Christmas and a snap that they don't have normally. And I can really hear it on these mid-range strings. Uh, the image it gives me is like of a titchy wall. It's a chewy, chewy sound. Uh, you know, it's a little bit of a twanging, chewy sound. I like it. It's, you know, snappy. Snappy. It's got some punch to it, which a stock D35 generally does not. 
once in a while you find one that's bright, but that was not the case here. And the owner complained that the guitar had tone suck. And I sure don't, I don't think it does now. I think it's a really nice guitar. I would own this guitar for the shop um, in a heartbeat. Um, Kimsey Luthery does not have a D35 to use as a model. And this is pretty much everything that I would do to a D35. If I was going to replace the bridge, um, sometimes I use uh, a high quality rosewood, again, a Honduran, um, Madagascar, to give it a little bit more snap. But I think this guitar's got enough snap as it is. And to me, you know, uh, that's all I do to a D35. This is a good guitar. It's got good bass. Good bass. Nice fat sound. Good balance. She's got a lot of treble. Got a really good neck on it. The binding is really nice and tight on the neck. Uh, a lot of times the D35s, you know, the binding will start decaying and you get little gaps and they feel funny. Uh, this one's really smooth. Really smooth. It's got a great neck on it. Very nice neck. Um, this is the D35 I would definitely own. Totally. Good guitar. So, it's going to go home. Providing the owner likes it. If he doesn't, I think I bought three or four guitars from him already. <laughs> Wow, I like that.